Hola, buenas noches, damas y caballeros. Bienvenidos a tu clase de español. In today's class, we're going to talk about three words uh, that I wrote on the whiteboard. Three words, tres palabras that cause confusion to a lot of you because, I mean, it's normal that cause confusion because they sound the same. And if you don't see them written, you think you're confused because they sound the same. Just hear me. I, I, I. Maybe the third one, it's a bit different. But some people, and if you're talking to many people, it might, it might cause some confusion. So that's why I want to explain to you exactly what each word means. Because even though they sound the same, they are completely different. They, they have nothing to do with each other. So you really have to understand one by one. And I believe that after this video, you will have a very clear mind about these words. And not only that, but you will recognize them when you hear them and you will also, also write them correctly. Muy bien. Well, let's start. Vamos a empezar. We're going to learn, well, we're not going to learn. You are going to learn because I already know that. That's what I'm teaching you. But tú vas a aprender estas palabras. We are going to start with probably the most important one of the three. La más importante es I. I. And I es del verbo a... Mi plumón murió. <laughs> oh, todos mis plumones mueren. Mueren. Plumón nuevo. Muy bien. I, disculpen la interrupción, I'm sorry for the interruption. Muy bien, I es del verbo haber. Muy bien, del verbo haber. And even though es del verbo haber, if I say yo he, tú has, él ha, usually that needs a participle, they call it like yo he venido a decirte, I have come to tell you. But this one, it's confusing because it's impersonal. This really doesn't have a person that says this. That's why it's equivalent to there is and there are. It doesn't really have a person, right? It's not yo e, it's only I, I. And always in past is uvo. We're going to see with uh, examples, this, uh, what I'm explaining to you, so it's clear. Muy bien, so I es el verbo haber, and that's equivalent to there is and there are. I, 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 okay? The H is not pronounced. I, repeat after me, I. Muy bien, let's go to some examples. I wrote first the English and then the Spanish, so you can connect them easily. There are a lot of people in Mexico City. Oh yes, there are a lot of people in Mexico City. Every time you go there, when you are crossing on by the Palace of the Arts, towards the Zócalo, it's like an army going. <clears throat> and you have to really fight for your place and keep going, keep straight, because otherwise they'll, they'll move you around. So, hay mucha gente en la Ciudad de México. Hay muchísima gente en la Ciudad de México. There is a lot of people in Mexico City. Hay mucha gente en la Ciudad de México. Before they used to call it el DF, but now it's la Ciudad de México. It's the politically correct term now. Muy bien. Uh, now you can ask, what's in the drawer? Is there something in the drawer? What's in the drawer? ¿Qué? Always get when you're asking a question with an accent mark, okay? Because I write very fast. Sometimes I forget, but I never let it go. I always recognize it. ¿Qué hay en ese cajón? What's in the drawer? ¿Qué hay en ese cajón? What's in the drawer? ¿Qué hay en ese cajón? Nothing. Nada. No hay nada. Now, there is a uh, another phrase that is very common. They say, what are you serving? You can ask, what are you serving? Maybe if you're a restaurant, what are you serving today? But maybe you can go home and ask your 
partner or your mother or or your computer what, what what's for dinner right what's for dinner that, now that's like saying that's for dinner que hay de comer what's for dinner or what's for uh, lunch que hay de comer really you literally you're asking what there is to eat what's to eat is there what do we have to eat no no what do we have to eat because <laughs> to survive but um what's what's for dinner and what's for lunch what's for breakfast it's a very mm, it, it's a very common phrase we say que hay de comer que hay de comer oh hay papas con rajas hay pollo con papas hay arroz hay tamales hay uh, tlacoyos hay de todo now we're going to go to the past there was an accident. Oh, I'm late because there was an accident. Llegué tarde because there was an accident. Llegué tarde porque hubo un accidente. Hubo en el pasado. Hubo un accidente. El pasado de hay es hubo. No hubieron. A lot of native Spanish speakers say hubieron. Um, but it's incorrect even when it's plural. Now, let's go to the plural one. There were many people. These days that there are a lot of uh, political um, topics in Mexico. And um, there are a lot of people who go on strike or they protest. So last time I was walking, iba caminando, la, la, iba caminando, and I see this uh, street that just started like they just started closing it right and there were a lot of people right so I told my mother well I'm late because there were a lot of people there were many people so I had to you know cross around them and everything so I say hubo muchas personas in the protest there were many people hubo muchas personas so even though I am talking about a plural muchas personas, I am using the same form, hubo. So there was an accident and there were many people in English, in English, necesitas dos um, palabras diferentes. There were and there are. Pero si quiere decir, if it, you mean to say there is and there, there is and there were or there, there was or there were, you have to say there was hubo and there were hubo all the time. This form, this verb doesn't change. Maybe you want to say instead of personas, which is plural, las personas, you want to say gente, la gente, that unlike English is a singular. In English is like there are a lot of people. In Spanish, I would say there is a lot of people because it's a singular, la gente. So if you want to change uh, muchas personas por gente, you're going to use the same form. Muy bien. What I'm trying to say is no matter, no matter you say there was and there were, in, in español you're going to say hubo. Muy bien. If you want to talk about the past. Now, give me one second. I'm going to get another marker because this already muerto. <laughs> muerto. Vamos a agarrar este morado. Es mi favorito. Por eso usé mucho este morado. Muy bien. Perfecto. Entonces, ¿qué entendimos? There is and there are. I and I. There was and there were. Hubo. Muy bien. And it's equivalent to there is. I. Now let's go to the second one. But before we go to the second one, let me explain this one to you because this, is, uh, this actually has something funny that I want to give, uh, leave to the end because then otherwise we have to be funny and then we have to be serious. So we better keep being serious and then we are funny. Serio, cómico, chistoso, muy bien. I, I wrote fewer examples because it's quite simple to understand it and also because I don't have a lot of space. Muy bien, no tengo mucho espacio. But with these examples, you will understand the generality of this uh, word, of this word this word yes when when you're walking imagine you're on vacation and usually you walk on the street where there are a lot of restaurants and 
coffee shops, restaurantes, tiendas, cafeterías. And so you're walking. And you're looking for a place to eat. Hmm, you're looking for a place to eat. So you're checking them out. Los estás viendo. You're seeing them. Ah, oh, no, no. Ese no me gusta. Ese no me gusta. I don't like that one. No, ese tampoco me gusta. I don't like that one either. No, ese tampoco me gusta. And etc. You keep going, oh, you don't really like those ones that you're seeing. De repente, de repente, suddenly, the light goes on. And then you see one that you actually like. How would you say that in Spanish? En español dirías, ahí se ve rico. Over there, it looks good. It looks tasty. Over there, it... Ahí se ve rico. You can say, ese me gusta. I like that one. Ahí se ve rico. Over there looks good. It looks tasty, really, what you're saying. Muy bien. So now that you go on with your friends and you decide, no, ese no. Ese tampoco. No, ese no me gusta. Ese está muy caro. Ese está muy sucio. That was very dirty. That's very expensive. Ese se ve rico. Ahí se ve rico. Over there. It's good. Muy bien. The next one is when you want to say, oh, I love the keys over there. Um, yeah, over there. Ahí. Over there. Ahí. Now, this one is a bit different than the others because really what you're saying is a, ah, and then you're going, you're saying like double e, e. But the accent is in the I. So this one is going to be higher. Ahí. Whereas this one, I, I, is very, listen to me, I, 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 I. But sometimes when you speak fast, you don't really can differentiate between them. But understand that this intonation of I goes up, a, I, a, I, without the H sound. Muy bien. So you can say, I left your keys there or over there. I. Te dejé las llaves. Ahí te dejé tus llaves. I left your keys over there. Ahí te dejé tus llaves. So whenever you want to replace something in English that has that word over there, ahí, no, allá, because allá is further. So ahí, within your view range, you say ahí. Perfecto. Now, let's, um, let's pass to the third one and last and to some funny but not so funny, Don't, I'm not a clown either, but a little bit funny, un poco chistosa. Vamos a ver, entonces esta ya la vimos, ahora vamos con esta. When you say, oh, see, here, I say head, <laughs> but it's head, oh, my head, oh, mi cabeza, oh, me duele mi cabeza, oh, mi cabecita, when you have some pain, oh, mi estómago. Then you're going to use this interjection. It's called an interjección. <laughs> interjección. Qué palabra tan fea. Ay. Ay. Con los dos signos de exclamación. ¿Ah? No se te olvide, ¿eh? Con los dos signos. Dos signos. El de para arriba y el para abajo. Ay, mi cabeza. You're saying, ay, mi cabeza. Ay, mi cabeza. ¿Qué quiere? Me duele mi cabeza. Ay, mi estómago. Me duele mi estómago. You're saying, but solo está siendo más dramático. You're just only being more dramatic. Está siendo más dramático. Ay, mi estómago. Ay, mis piernas. Sí, you can say, no. ay, mis ojos. If you want to, to be dramatic, then you use that one. Instead, me duele la cabeza. You can say, ay, mi cabeza. Muy bien. Vamos al siguiente. Oops, I forgot to send an email. So you finish your work. Terminas de trabajar. Vas a tu casa y dices, ¡Ay! ¡Ay! Se me olvidó mandar el correo. Se me olvidó mandar un correo. Forgot to send an email. ¡Ay! Se me olvidó llamarle a fulanito. Fulanito is a name that we use instead of like whatever. Like it doesn't have a name. Like you're not talking about anyone. Fulanito. Ay, se me olvidó hablarle a fulano. Ay, so you're going to complain. This is use, very useful, is to express your drama pain and to complain. Ay, se me olvidó. Ay, no le mandé. See, all the things you didn't do. 
Muy bien. ¿Por qué te enseño esto? Eh? Bueno, lo vas a usar. Se me olvidó mandar un correo. Muy bien. You can say, ay caray. A lot of Spanish speakers say, ay caray. Or you say, ay caramba. Ay caramba. In fact, there's a terrible program that is called ay caramba. I, I have been, I don't know if it's still on because I don't watch TV now. Ay caramba, ay caramba. It's when something happens like, oh damn, or ay caramba, o algo te espanta, something scares you. Ay caramba, it's just, it's just to express your, when you're in oh. Ay caramba, it's like, just remember the face. That means ay caramba. Muy bien, you can say, or ay caray. A lot of people say ay ay ay, ay ay ay, when you're a bit disturbed by something like ay ay ay. They almost crash their cars. Ay ay ay, ay ay ay. Yeah, they really are saying ay ay ay, but they are not saying ay ay ay. They are saying ay ay ay. <laughs> Entonces, es como they hug each other, right? But imagine you say it like that. Ay ay ay. <laughs> that would be so funny. Ay ay ay. Muy bien. Now, there is a legend in Mexico about this woman who cries at night. And parents terrify you when you're young. They terrify you. Um, that if you don't stop crying, if you don't eat, if you, whatever, don't do, that crying woman is gonna come and take you and mistake, mistakenly thinking that you are her son or daughter. And that's because something really bad happened to her sons and daughters. I don't know how many exactly. I don't even wanna say what happened because it's very, it's, it's very shocking. <laughs> But let's say they are no longer with her anymore. So she's sad and, and she's like, ay, mis hijos, like, oh, my children, oh, my children. And she says, ay, mis hijos, ay, mis hijos. And your parents or your older siblings really, really scare you. They they are very nasty and they scare you. So that's the legend and it's very common now. You don't eat the crying woman, La Llorona, it's called La Llorona. La Llorona va a venir, va a venir por ti, it's gonna come and pick you up. If you don't do this, uh, I guess that's the Mexican style uh, education though. I don't know if you would do that with your children in North America or I guess you go to jail, I don't know. Ay, mis hijos, anyway, that's the legend. Now, there is another Mexican thing related to this word. Um, I'm sure you have heard it because it's actually it's more popular in North America rather than in Mexico. And it's a song that says, Ay, 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 canta y no llores, porque cantando se alegra el cielito lindo los corazones. It says, ay, 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 ay. Uh, sing and don't cry because singing you make your heart, the hearts um, happy. Yeah, because singing makes your heart happy. A lot of people in North America of Mexican origin like it. And it's probably more common there than actually in Mexico because I guess it's some nostalgia from their country. Muy bien, so it's ay, 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 canta y no llores, la, la, la. Muy bien, I think that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed my lesson. If you did enjoy my lesson, then watch another lesson. If you didn't enjoy my lesson, then do whatever you want. No me importa. And if you are interested in learning some more Spanish, I have a lot of playlists in my channel. And I also, I also have a website where you can go www.butterflyspanish.com and there you can learn, uh, you can subscribe to get my newsletter first of all and in my newsletter I will probably, no I won't spam your email, I will write, I wouldn't say it like what's going on with me because I don't really say that although maybe I'm thinking one day I will but um, it's only about Spanish, Spanish topics, Spanish uh, news, Spanish, whatever is going on, and that I think that information could help you improve your Spanish learning, uh, Spanish language skills and cultural skills. 
So you learn a lot more um, with that newsletter. So go to my website and sign up to get my newsletter. Also, if you think my lessons benefit your Spanish and they make you improve your Spanish and you're learning something, please consider make a donation. Um, it's for free, uh, but you know, if you can make a donation, that would be really useful. I can get my material to keep doing my lessons and I can put time towards making my lessons and prepare myself more. Anyway, that's enough blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I don't know, that's it, I guess. I, uh, I just don't wanna go, I wanna keep teaching you Spanish. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed my lesson and have a good night. Buenas noches, que la pases bien. Adios.